So hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's Trading Spotlight webinar here together with Atmara Markets. It's Friday, it's the 9th of October 2020. And today we want to look at a topic which is um, probably especially interesting for longer term traders, longer term uh, investors probably. So a question which uh, you might have um, already wondered about a little ETFs versus stocks and which you should invest in, especially um, um, in the current environment. So probably some of you might wonder um, which world will be the world um, um, after Corona or um, what will change um, and uh, what vision do I have for, for the future, especially. So um, let's, let's take me as an example. I could imagine that uh, there will be, uh, that's called the green revolution and that, for example, um, 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 H2O will play a significant role in the future, for example. So you might wonder, are there, um, is, what, what's a better choice? So to have an ETF which invests in H2O, or um, is it better to stock pick, in fact, um, um, several shares? And uh, in fact, this is um, one of the topics today. So not um, especially for the green revolution or H2O stocks, but more like what um um what should be your preference here based on what should you take this decision and this is um uh, something we want to dig deeper into than today so today's agenda um we want first of all start with um simple question uh what are stocks in fact and um I'm emphasize once again explain what are stocks so quite basic but i think it's necessary to to have this basic overview first and then take it from there the same is also true for the third question in this case so what are etfs um also we we had a trading spotlight webinar on that topic on etfs exchange traded funds um, but still, we want to um, uh, here have a look at the yeah at, at, at the key facts in fact, and um, then in for both cases stocks and ETFs, we also want to point out the advantages here for both. And at the end, um, I want to uh, yeah answer the question of today's webinar in fact. So which should I invest in, stocks or ETFs? And probably I can give you an idea on um, um, how to use in case both for uh, your overall, let's say, um, investment journey. You will probably start after uh, today's webinar rather sooner than later. So um, that's me. So my name is Jens. I'm uh, located in Berlin in Germany. And um, uh, I, I don't want to talk that much about me. So uh, probably you've um, seen several webinars already in the in the past. Um, but by the way, if you watch the recording here on YouTube, uh, then um, please feel free to ask your questions all in the chat box um, and below. I, I'd be happy to answer them. Also, give a thumb up if you like what you what you will um, hear here uh, in the upcoming minutes. Um, and. Uh, I'm in the financial industry now for 15 to 20 years, something in between. In fact, I started right away from school, uh, went to a bank and um, um, uh, had a traineeship there. And after that, or during that time, I found out that trading or trading investment, uh, that this, uh, um, this, this, this um, world of, of, of trading, let's call it, that this is uh, the place to be for me. Um, but to enter this world, I, I first of all had to go to university, um, studied mathematics and economics, um, because I, I just um, figured out that probably it makes sense uh, to have a quantitative background and then take it from there, hopefully uh, find my way somewhere to Wall Street or something. And beside my studies, I really digged into the topic of trading and was um, um, a trading assistant back then um, for a big stock broker here in Berlin. So I really learned trading from scratch, in fact, and from the institutional side. And uh, then at the end, I, um, yeah, I, I made my way into the CFD and FX business, first of all, as an intern. Um, there was also a broker here, which um, opened an office in, in, in uh, Berlin. Um, I joined them as a, as a student first, and then uh, the question arose whether I could help out to build um, a research and education um, website, which was quite big success in the German speaking community, in fact, and then took it from there. Um, went out of myself after six years building that to one of the main sources, resources for retail traders. And um, today I'm self-employed and uh, yeah, I'm happy here to be here um, uh, with Atmara Markets, which is the broker also behind this, um, which is the broker behind this trading um, a spotlight webinar series, in fact, um, which we do together, not just me, but also with 
together with Paul and, and Marcus probably have joined them on uh, Mondays, respectively Wednesdays. And uh, Admiral Markets is, um, especially in regards to Berlin, to Germany, uh, probably um, um, noteworthy. Why is that? Well, I am um, interested said that I worked within a bank and here, especially in the retail sector. And what I know based on my personal experience is that um, retail clients, especially when it comes to financial questions, and also this is not just true for, for uh, withdrawals from your, from your classic bank account, but this is also probably especially true when it comes to trading derivatives and, and highly leveraged products. In fact, you want to talk to someone in your native language. And um, Admiral Markets is now not only 19 years um, into the CFD and FX um, industry and um, has has grown to one of the most respective and biggest and most influential, I'd say, um, 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 brokers here. But in addition to that, has offices around um, 20, office, 20 offices and more around the globe, in fact. So why I mention that is um, you will rather sooner or later probably have a question, but English is probably some difficult, there, there are some difficulties or you, you do, do not have a problem to talk English to someone, but want to talk um, about your, your issue in, in your respective, in your native language. And then you have a good chance, a high chance that um, someone at Amra Markets will speak your language and thus your problem will be solved um, in a in a very great way to be honest um yeah and in addition to that this is this is just one side note but in addition to that the um commissions the uh, spreads st the stability once you trade is um uh, based on my personal experience i'm i'm trading life with um, an admiral account too um is it's just yeah it's outstanding. It's really outstanding. Here in Germany, we refer to Admiral as the DAX 30 expert, in fact. So with the most competitive offering probably in the FX, um, and especially CFD um, uh, environment when it comes to DAX trading. So why do I mention all that? Reach out to AdmiralMarkets.com and find out yourself and uh, test it with a demo account. It's definitely worth it to give Admiral a try. So now we want to start with today's topic and answer the question, what are stocks? Um, again, I, I already said it, it's quite basic what we'll do now, but I think it makes probably sense to somehow sense also um, the differences between stocks and, and, and ATFs and get a better idea of um, where, and, um, um, uh, yeah, a, a wording comes into play, which I mentioned right here. We call this um, beta or beta stocks, for example. And the beta is in fact um, a, a variable which might be of interest here. And that's, that, that's why we want to dig into the basics first and take it from there then. So stocks um, or a stock owner, um, once you buy a stock, uh, you're, um, um, you're owner of the company, at least partial owner. So you have a proportionate ownership in the issuing corporation then. And uh, the corporation issues stock to raise, in fact, funds uh, to operate their business. Um, this is probably one um, aspect I'd, I'd really like to emphasize because this is um, sometimes forgotten um, or probably uh, many people who um, um, first get into touch with trading, they think this is all about speculation and it's all about making money and um, going in and out quick and, and, and dirty. And, and at the end of the month, hopefully you have more in your account than you started the, uh, the month with. Um, so in fact, when it comes to speculation, Speculation that might be uh, the main reason why you uh, get into this business. But um, uh, the roots of stocks or stock exchanges, stock trading is in fact that there are corporations which issue stocks to raise funds to operate their businesses and to, um, um, yeah, to, 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 to uh, grow their companies and to make sure that people are employed and to really... Um, to, to help an economy grow, in fact. And um, this is one of the reasons why, one, on one hand, you probably recall one of the webinars we had together here with trading um, uh, in the trading spotlight series with um, high frequency trading. You probably record that we um, uh, made strategies of HFTs here, algorithms, we made them a topic. Um, but, and, and I'm fascinated by that, no question about that. But still, I'm, um, I'm a bit skeptical whether this really uh, serves the purpose here, in fact, of um, growing an economy or uh, helping corporations um, here to raise funds to operate their businesses. And uh, that's, that's one of the main things we, we should never forget. This is probably especially true when we uh, focus here on long-term engagements, long-term investments, in fact. So 
what I'd say based on my personal experience. And when it comes to investments in, in general, you should um, most of the time really focus, especially when it comes to long-term engagements, you should focus on buying stocks um, within an industry you um, probably have heard about before or you have a vision for for the future. So I introduced this webinar with my personal um, um, thoughts on, um, um, on, on, on the future after Corona and uh, after this economic um, downturn and the Corona lockdown and um, economies around the globe being shattered, unemployment shooting through the roof. So you wonder, um, with what vision do I have for the future? In fact, and uh, in case in my case, for example, a green revolution, H two O stocks, for example, play a role. But in addition to that, um, we probably all agree that there will be some kind of artificial intelligence influence which will grow over time. So, which means that especially companies which focus now on artificial intelligence um, or who already made their way into this area, in fact, and and probably um, um, get Gain momentum. In this case, for example, um, we can we can already mention one stock. I'm I'm fascinated, in fact, by the developments in um, Nvidia, for example. So you just have a look. The last five years, the the, the stocks just the stock just exploded, and um, the latest um, earnings report, for example, on Nvidia showed that they are um, um, here making more money now in the data um, area, in fact, than in the gaming industry where they usually come from and where um, uh, they already made a big impact, in fact, um, around the new economy bubble at 2000. So back then when, when uh, we, I was in school and I, I, I talked about um, computers, for example, and, and graphics and design and all that stuff to my friends, it was a big issue, a uh, big, big topic, in fact. And we, we discussed that. We, we got really excited. And who has um, the best um, computer, personal computer at home and which graphic um, a card you should use. And NVIDIA was already back um, a topic back then. And um, why is it noteworthy in case of artificial intelligence, for example? Well, because now uh, they use their um, um, advantage here. Um, they have um, over their competitors and they try to gain momentum here when it comes to uh, facial recognition, for example, and then use the data which they um, 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 accumulate here um, and to, to really gain traction in the um, area of artificial intelligence, for example. The same is true for data. I mentioned this now several times. Um, um, data is or will be is, 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 is the potential source of economic growth and, and, um, um, and also might power in the future. Uh, so um, um, there are companies like, for example, uh, Google, but also uh, companies like Facebook. They will definitely play a very important role here when it comes to investments. And there you also see, by the way, we're only, only talking about U.S. Um, 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 companies here in this context. Just imagine now you're listening to this webinar from Australia or from Europe put it simply, as me, for example. So we pay our bills in Euro, respectively in Australian dollars, which means if I now buy a stock, which is, um which is um, um, issuing stocks here, and, and, and you can buy them in US dollar, well, you probably want to hedge your exposure. That's one of the reasons why um, a multi-asset broker, for example, is of high interest here and why Admiral Markets plays um, also a very important role. Just imagine, I mean, you, you have a, a stock, NVIDIA, Facebook, Google, let's just take the big names here, and you have, let's say, exposure of 10,000 USD, uh, but you pay your bills in, let's say, euro. So you have then a chance to use um, um, here the FX offering from Admiral Markets then to, for example, sell US dollar, 10,000, one mini lot in this case, and buy euro in this case. So go 10,000 units long euro USD. So just to give you an idea of why multi-asset brokerage, for example, is important. So but this is not today's topic, but just to give you um, um, some further insight on, on how to use this, this knowledge then. So now let's come back to what, what are stocks. So then there's two types of um, stocks, in fact. So it's common and it's preferred. Most of the time you will talk about um, common stocks, but um, preferred stocks, you probably have heard about them. Um, in, in my personal um, world, I have to say the first name which comes to my, um, 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 w w which hits my, my mind here when I talk about preferred stocks is Volkswagen in case of, of Germany then. Um, so the automobile um, 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 giant, in fact, um, they also issue common stock, but also preferred stock. So this was the first stock where I realized that there was a difference. And um, which are um, uh, the, the differences here, in fact, 
let me just see. Okay, I'm sorry. So um, common stocks usually are the ones you usually buy. You have the rights to vote to, for example. Uh, so we will talk about this in the next slide, in fact. So in case of common shares or common stock, then um, uh, you, you, you have voting privileges, in fact. So if some might say, hey, I, I don't want to, don't, I don't want to vote um, here at, um, 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 at, at the, the um, um, events being held by corporations issuing stocks, then you might say, hey, I go for preferred stocks um, because these usually have uh, just, or they, they usually pay higher dividends for your, um, uh, for you, uh, saying, I don't want this voting right here, in fact. So this is the main difference we can say. Usually also here, preferred stocks usually pay with a discount to the common stocks, for example, just to give you a rough overview of that. And um, again, stocks are usually bold and sold most of the time on stock exchanges like NYSE, like NASDAQ, for example. Why is that noteworthy? Um, there's a difference. When you look at Admiral Markets, you might have probably come across um, Admiral Invest. So Admiral Invest is your chance to invest longer term in physical stocks. And there's no leverage. It's one-to-one, -one, in fact. So if you buy, let's say, um, 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 Volkswagen, for example, there, a Volkswagen stock, you buy the stock and you are, um, um, then in this case, uh, um, you, you are owner of Volkswagen, at least based on your, on your um, um, share you just bought. And <clears throat> so there's no leverage, there's um, nothing compared to that. Um, and uh, it's one-to-one -one unleveraged and you really buy the stock at the exchange. Most of um, the stocks you trade there are traded via BATS. This is an, um, 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 uh, what's the word for this? It's an exchange too, but it's, uh, yeah, let's say it's an exchange. So there, there, there's a possibility for you to buy these stocks too. And um, nevertheless, most of these stocks are usually, if you're not trading CFDs or C share CFDs here in this case, these um, uh, stocks are usually bought and sold via stock exchanges. And um, what we can also say, and this is probably most of, um, or this is probably the, of, of the highest interest here for you, is that in general, you can say stocks have outperformed most other investments over the long run. So um, what, what we could um, 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 say here is, in fact, if you build a portfolio, long-term portfolio, then you should have stock, definitely. There, there's no other way um, or you, there's no other chance than to say stocks are definitely part of your portfolio in one or the other way, in fact. And uh, let's have now a look at the advantage of, of stock investing. So first of all, attractive returns. Historically, long-term equity returns um, have been uh, better than returns from cash or fixed income investments, such as bonds, especially now. I mean, there's no other choice then. And stocks, probably you have wondered, why are stocks rising that aggressively? Well, because um, there, there's no um, um, alternative to, to stocks. Let's put it simply. I mean, there's a higher risk connected to that, um, but still, we, we we can say that if you have a bond, let's say 10 year German bond, which is currently paying minus 5.5%, uh, that means you give uh, the German state, you give them, uh, let's say 100,000 euros. And at the end, you um, get back 995 um, um, Okay, so per year, you're paying half a percent, in fact, um, to hold such a bond. And, and yeah, the riskiness is definitely given based on all the developments we currently see in the euro area. So during my time in the bank, for example, um, we usually referred to um, uh, bonds as risk-free. Times have definitely changed. That might be true to some extent still. And, and some might probably say, well, do you really think that the German state will go down and can't repay the debt? Um, I think uh, it's it's not very likely, but still it's an option we should take into account. I mean, uh, Germany is not Argentina, but look at the developments there. Look at what happened. The same is also true for real estate, for example, um, um, and REITs, for example. So other investment vehicles, which were considered to be quite safe, in fact, and um, how they performed during the great financial crisis in 2008. So if you take the risk now, which is increasing by, um, uh, um, um, by, by, by states like Germany, but also the Eurozone or in the case of, of the US, for example, um, uploading or not unloading debt, but um, uh, to make more and more debt to finance the economic downturn, which we currently see due to the corona lockdown, we can definitely say there will be a 
point once uh, these states can't pay back their their debt anymore. And then there will be yeah, there will be lots of of, of um, um, difficulties. In fact, um, um, and in the financial markets, there will be high volatility. In fact, so and therefore you get negative yield, which is. Yeah, let's say ridiculous. I mean, you, you pay to have a bond, which you can't be sure to get repaid on um, in 10 years from now, because no one can really foresee what will happen, for example, to the Eurozone. And if Germany can still repay the debt and and and, and continue to, um, to in fact, um, 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 hold the whole Eurozone together. And there, in such an environment, stocks are definitely um, are the only alternative, in fact. And this is what I mean when it comes to um, not just the attractive returns, but also to the um, um, aspect that there's no other choice than to have equity um, and stocks, in this case, in your portfolio. There's also protection against taxes and also inflation, which can negatively impact your wealth. Equity investments can, get, uh, can, can also give better tax treatment. Um, that's, it's a very interesting aspect, in fact. Probably um, um, some of you, well, let's make it very, very simple. So um, I'm not a tax advisor. So therefore, please go to your uh, tax advisor um, and ask him for, for advice here. But um, let's assume you have, uh, let's say, equities, equi equity position um, worth 1 million, for example, but it's floating gain, in fact. And, and based on your, and your an investment within a stock, let's say Amazon or Google or something like that. Well, once these companies pay a dividend, in fact, so um, dividends here, um, this is what, what uh, I already referred to in case of common shares, um, dividend income, um, this is what you get and what you have to pay tax on, in fact. But once you have, let's say, a position in Amazon, which is not paying a dividend, by the way, um, you, you grow your wealth without having to pay taxes because it's a floating gain. In fact, so we, we only pay on realized income, not on unrealized income, which it is until you have sold your stock in this case. So, and this is something um, which, which plays a very important role, especially when it comes to compounding um, and, 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 and to build wealth, in fact, in addition to inflation developments, which probably are also of interest when it comes to gold um, uh, here. We will, we will look at this and a little later on the um, example I prepared in this context, um, but it's also an inflation hatch. If you see currently the developments in equities, for example, in the US, one of the main reasons, for example, for this massive run higher is not just um, uh, the massive monetary stimulus you see from the Fed, it's one driver, certainly, but it's also potentially market participants hedging against inflation. Once you see inflation um, rising, you see usually prices rise. And this is also probably especially true for equity prices in this case. So um, while inflation picks up, most of your wealth might be um, safe might be um, based on the fact that you have a position in stocks which are um, rising hand in hand with rising inflation, for example. So then common shares, that was something I mentioned already, which delivers not just capital growth, but also dividend income. And you have voting privileges, respectively, liquidity. So you can trade them all the time, which is very, very important, in fact, once you um, have some sort of, of, of liquidity issue due to Corona, let's say, um, you, you can sell your shares nearly every time. We've seen that most of market participants might have done that during um, March and April, in fact, and, and get liquidity to keep on paying their invoices or stay liquid, in fact, um, to, to keep on running their businesses. Um, and preferred shares also, um, they deliver capital growth. They have where they can be considered a reliable in terms of income stream, in fact. So fixed dividend amount that must be paid before any dividends to common shareholders. So it's not only that um, preferred shares might pay higher dividends, but in addition to that, you have also a right. You, you don't have the voting right, but you have the right to be paid before all other dividends are paid, in fact. And this might result then um, here, the higher dividend in this case and a higher income um, preferred Stocks, as I already mentioned, tend to pay higher um, um, dividends. In fact, again, there's no voting right. But um, if you do not plan to take influence on a, on a corporation here and on the uh, board of directors here, well, um, you, you probably might say I'm, I'm fine by, by having no voting rights, but instead take the higher um, return. So that's it on stocks. Now, let's have a look here on uh, ETFs. 
Um, and we had a webinar on that. So this is, in fact, the webinar we had several months, weeks ago. I'm not sure, but uh, that that's why we can really um, uh, go a little quicker here through through uh, the question: What are ETFs? So ETF is short for exchange traded fund, which is um, a group of securities you can buy or sell via uh, um, um, a stock exchange. In fact, and um, What's interesting of, of um, ETFs is that it offers a range of asset classes here consisting of a group of, for example, traditional listed companies, but also currencies or commodities. So there's several um, ETFs you can invest in. And uh, what um, can also be seen is um, it's a way to, or attractive way for passive investors, in fact, due to, um, uh, due to, due to um, um, lower costs, in fact, when you want to buy um, an ETF on the DAX, for example. So the DAX um, is a purely mathematical construct, in fact, which means if you want to have a position in the German DAX, in the German um, 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 DAX, the, the um, um, index, you have to buy, let's say, once you want to invest 100,000, you have to buy something like 6,781 euros worth of Adidas, for example, and 7,347 euros of Allianz. And you can already see it's not just complicated, but in addition to that, it's also quite um, um, uh, expensive because uh, you have to, to, to order each stock in the um, um, amount um, which which is or in in, in um, based on the weight it has in the DAX, in fact, and uh, so that's quite expensive. In fact, very difficult to achieve. If you buy a DAX ETF here, you pay um, once the uh, commission and the spread, and that's it. In fact, so it's a very very um, um, eff efficient in this context, and um, that's probably one of the reasons. And also, um, in comparison to mutual mutual funds, for example, um, they are cheaper. They are um, 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 they they can still fulfill your investment goals and your investment needs, and 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 have a perfect. You can based on on several ETFs, you can get a quite. Um, um, not just attractive um, uh, investment portfolio, but you have also a great, great chance that your portfolio then um, shows your, your, your risk profile in a quite adequate way, let's put it that way. And uh, that's one of the reasons why ETFs have seen heavy capital inflow since um, they can uh, be very good at uh, realizing, as I already said, your investment goal um, structures then. And uh, if you look at US um, um, markets and US stock exchanges alone, there are nearly over nearly 1,000 ETFs currently you can invest in. And uh, the current investment volume is around 1 trillion, 1 trillion US dollar um, here, which already shows that they're also most of the time very, very liquid. And uh, that's, that brings us to the, to the um, advantages here of um, ETFs, in fact. So that's a little unfortunate, but fair enough. So tax efficiency, um, that's um, probably interesting for most longer term investors. Investors may have better control over the aspect of when they pay capital gains tax. Again, I'm not a tax advisor. Ask your um, tax advisor, please ask your tax advisor for further information on that. But that might be a reason why you want to invest in ETFs. They are low, um, um, there's, there's lower fee, a low fee structure, what I already mentioned compared to, for example, to mutual funds, but also if you want to, um, for example, invest in the DAX here, but have to pay, um, um, yeah, 30 times order um, an execution fee and spread and everything, um, which is getting quite exp um, 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 expensive over time. Again, they're highly liquid here, which leaves investors in the position to trade um, uh, the respective ETF nearly each time of the day if the stock exchange is open. That's probably one of the aspects which um, some uh, might wonder about, especially if you're used to trade FX, for example, where you can trade 24, five, in fact, every day um, from Monday till Friday and around the clock, in fact. So this is not possible when trading stocks, physical stocks, respectively, when uh, you wanna trade ETFs. So if the stock market is closed, it's closed. So you can't, you can't really trade. This is also um, interesting for shorter term um, uh, traders in this case then, when it comes to the risk um, component here and gaps which could occur. Um, 
then trading transactions as ETFs here can be traded like stocks. So it's in fact the same logic, which is behind that. Um, investors then can place also a variety of um, different order types. So limit orders, stop loss orders, buy on margin orders, and ETC, which are not available once you trade mutual funds. This is also something which is of interest, probably especially for those who are more active here. Uh, respectively, who um, 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 want to or have a specific investment target then in this case and want to buy an ETF, but also a stock here to a certain uh, price and, and, and then falls uh, for, for um, a certain amount here, in fact. And again, the lower risk component, since the ETF, this is, this is something which is of interest now for the upcoming um, minutes when we look at the uh, question of which we should invest in ETFs or stocks. So ETFs have a lower risk, put this in quotation marks, but um, usually an ETF invests, or it's not usual, but it's most common, um, in a variety of stocks, for example, which results in a broader diversification. Uh, and this is um, arguably um, a lower investment risk, so-called beta risk, in fact. So you have uh, not all X in one um, uh, in one basket, if you want. And um, so this brings us then to the uh, question this webinar is in fact about. So which should I invest in, stocks or ETFs? And uh, first of all, let's look at stocks. So with stocks alone, you have a greater chance to find an attractive risk reward opportunity, especially in regards to return that uh, beats the market. Okay, so this is, um, uh, the question here, which we should we should ask ourselves, in fact, so are we a good stock picker or are you a good stock picker here? If the answer is yes, well, then stocks definitely better um, offer a better potential return in relation to the risk, which is especially true in the growth or tech sector, which has seen um, some, some awesome results from the uh, March lows, from the Corona lockdown lows, in fact, and equities. So just look at the NASDAQ, how it outperformed value, in fact. And um, the key word here is, again, this beta risk, which is higher, resulting in a wider dispersion from the mean, in fact. So um, what, what this means is this is now getting um, quite, let's say, um, technical. So I, I try to be as, um, uh, I try to be, let me, uh, one second, let me just do it that way. Um, let me just see, one second, let's take it that way. So you probably have seen that, um, it's a random distribu distribution in fact. And uh, now let's, let's do something else here. So this is, this is one and this is two. So, the black um, um, bell curve, we can we can call that here. Uh, that's let's say a, a typical um, um, a typical bell curve um, and distribution in terms of return when it comes to tech stocks. So you can see it's it's broader, which means that you have a higher chance to um, make more money. But in addition to that, due to uh, this this um, 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 wider yeah, wider dispersion from the mean. The, the problem here with that is that there's also higher risk due to higher volatility, in fact. So once the market moves in your favor, usually high beta stocks usually outperform um, here, in this case, the red ones, uh, which has a, a smaller um, um, dispersion from the mean. But this is the thing. So the wider the dispersion from the mean, uh, the greater the potential on the upside, but the lower the potential on the downside, which is not true, for example, here for utility stocks, for example. So to take a simple example, which has usually um, a quite small, respectively narrower um, um, dispersion from the mean in this case. And, and this is what I mean with beta here in this case. So probably that's um, probably also a topic um, for, for future Trading Spotlight webinar, if you're interested in that. Um, just to give you an idea on what, what I mean with that, it's very roughly speaking, but I think um, you, you fully understand once you look at the chart or you're probably you're a little advanced um, when it comes to, to trading in general. You have seen that growth titles, for example, have a higher volatility. Look at the NASDAQ 100, for example, seeing a 
quite aggressive swings, especially when it comes to risk off modes, for example. But um, once the uh, corrective move or the uh, push lower is over, then usually you also see an outperformance on the, on the long side, then once the market recovers. And this is due to the um, higher beta component, we can, we can call that. And um, so this, this um, a beta here, is especially true when it comes to the question, are you a good stock picker, in fact? But I'll give you an idea on um, how to probably combine um, here this stock picker component, probably answer that question right now for, I'm not sure, at least. Um, so I will give you an idea on how I do that, for example. But first of all, let's have a look here. If you can clearly answer the question to no, um, then ETFs are definitely a better choice for you, especially when the better risk um, is low, like I already said in utility stocks, for example. So um, if you have um, um, high beta, a high beta sector tech, for example, and you have Amazon, you have Nvidia, you have Facebook, you have Google, you have these titles, then it comes to, um, then it comes to better risk, then it comes to your, your um, ability to stock pick. Once you look at the uh, utility sector, where the better is usually lower slash quite low, um, then ETFs are most of the time the better choice um, because ETF, um, um, ETFs here may also be advantageous, let's say, if you're unable to gain an, gain an advantage here through knowledge of the company. So if you don't really know the sector, for example, that's Oh, yeah, that's a perfect example. Let's look back at my uh, thoughts in terms of the green revolution, H2O, for example. So I'm not an expert on that um, 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 topic, in fact. So I, it's just my vision. And I have to, to read something about that, do some research myself. And now the question might arise, okay, what is the right stock to pick, for example? So the first stock which comes to my mind um, is uh, Ballard Power, for example. So this is a, the company which is also quite um, is well known, I think. Um, it's a Canadian company, but all this, for example, is, is one thing you have to, to really think about before you invest. And uh, now the question is, probably based on the fact that Ballard is already known to the, um, uh, to the broader audience, is it really a good choice then in terms of stock picking? What is um, about the balance sheet, for example? Have a look here and, and, and how are the developments here over, over the last, um, um, let's say five to 10 years, for example. So the question here is then, um, is, this, is this enough for me to say I'm putting my X, let's say my 10,000 euro in this basket here, or is it probably better to look out for um, um, an H2O ETF, for example, which is also offered um, here. I'm not sure about the, um, um, uh, the uh, well, what's the word for this, Rick? I don't know. So the, the, the short um, uh, description, the, the three or four um, uh, um, um, uh, letters here, which, which then identify the uh, ETF. Um, but it, probably an ETF is better because I don't really gain an advantage through my um, um, quite sno small knowledge of this um, um, industry or this sector in general, in this green revolution area, H2O sector, in fact. So that might be um, um, one reason why I prefer an H2O um, um, ETF here in this context. So just to give you an idea of what I, I mean with this aspect. But let's come now back to my idea on how to combine this knowledge in terms of stock picking and ETFs. How can we, how can we use this? So probably you have seen uh, the developments, recent developments, especially uh, when it comes around gold, the massive um, rise in, in precious metals in general. So probably it's not just gold, but probably in addition to that, we could also mention here um, the, the massive rise in, in silver. And I have to say, I'm I'm of the opinion it's not over. So we, I think we're at the beginning of a quite extensive run higher here. And even if um, the broader sector, probably especially growth sector, probably it will underperform in the upcoming years. Now we, we're talking really a longer time frame, um, but I, I'm not really sure um, whether whether growth sector can continue to perform as well as it did, but I could really imagine that, for example, in addition to um, to, to to H2O, for example, or to to um, um, data 
probably also to some extent artificial intelligence there the stock picking aspect comes into play um, and probably nvidia as a classic growth title has also some outperformance potential but i'm to be honest quite sure that gold respectively silver have a good um, um, um outlook here in terms of of growth especially but also in terms of return and this is also true for for precious metals in general so gold silver holdings and now mining stocks come into my uh into my mind here and there's an ETF, in fact, if you have this outlook. Now we came to the, con let's, let's um, 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 shorten things up here and say, well, we come to the conclusion we expect mining stocks to outperform in the upcoming years. Um, so now the question is, okay, well, is there an ETF on um, mining stocks? And there is one, um, it's short, it's the so-called GDX here. I open it at uh, Yahoo Finance in this case. So um, this is this is the um, FunEck Vectors Gold Miners ETF, GDX. There's also an equivalent um, uh, at, at Admiral Markets. I'm, I'm not sure, it's it's not GDX, but it's, uh, it's another equivalent. I haven't looked it up yet, but this is not um, my point. So I know that there's um, this ETF now, which gives me the chance to, uh, without deep knowledge, let's say, um, to, to invest in this whole sector. Um, since I have a positive outlook due to the monetary um, um, access, the uh, um, Fed is running currently, expanding uh, the balance sheet and expecting it to go beyond 10 trillion rather sooner than later. So now I come to the conclusion that also mining stocks should outperform. So this ETF is probably a good choice. Now, the thing is, um, do I really expect the whole mining sector to outperform? Or is it probably that there will be some stocks which will potentially outperform, probably due to their um, already um, um, established brand within the mining um, industry. And then what we can do is, what we know about ETFs is that the ETF is a basket of stocks, in fact, um, which is representing a sector. And now what we have here, once we scroll down a little, we have the top 10 holdings. So, which is in fact already adding up to over 60% of total assets here. So all holdings combined, um, these top 10 here, um, um, based on their capitalization, market capitalization within the GDX, um, they, they are good for more than 60%. And what, I can, um, um, what, what we can do now when it comes to stock picking is, let's have a look at the first three, for example, here, Newmont, Barrick Gold and Franco Nevada here in this case, especially Newman and Barrick obviously have a great weight here. So both are nearly um, the same. And also what you can, what I can definitely say is that you can trade ABX here um, via Admiral Invest. I haven't looked it up for Newman, could imagine Newman to be available too. And uh, so now what you could do is um, it, it, let's say you say, I plan based on my research and my conclusion, I'm coming to the conclusion, I want to invest in the mining sector, but I want to um, stock pick here. I don't want to invest in the whole sector in the ETF. Then you say, okay, I'm, I'm going for the first two strongest names here, Newman and Barrick and invest, let's say you have 10,000 based on, on your knowledge that both have around 20, um, um, uh, 12% within the GDX ETF here, you say, I take five grand and put them in Newmont and I put the another five in Barrick, for example. That's one way to, um, uh, to, to, to somehow combine, let me just go back here to the here to this slide. So how to combine um, the knowledge of an exchange traded fund um, here, the top 10 holdings, and then use it to uh, go over to a stock picking um, uh, component here and, and, and try to somehow probably, yeah, use your knowledge or leverage your, your knowledge here and go for a higher return in um, relation to the taken risk. So that's one idea on how to combine ETF and, and stock knowledge here and how to, um, uh, yeah, how to, how, to, how to use this then, in fact. So, Let's come to the summary. First of all, as a stock owner, you have uh, a proper, proportionate ownership in the issuing corporation. And then there are two main types of stock, common and preferred stock. So if the investor is not after the voting right, preferred stocks may offer an interesting alternative in terms of a higher potential return. That's the first thing which we have, or um, 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 w w which we can conclude out of, of the knowledge about the stocks. So ETF is short for exchange traded fund, which is um, a group of securities you can buy or you can sell via a stock exchange. 
And ETFs can offer a range of asset classes consisting of a group, for example, traditionally listed companies, but also currencies or commodities. And now um, to answer the question, which should I invest in stocks or ETFs? If you're more sophisticated, if you are a good stock picker, we could say, especially higher beta stocks might offer substantial higher return in comparison to the taken risk. If you're not, and uh, if you're especially um, looking for um, solid income streams in terms of dividend, for example, based on utility stocks you wanna have in your portfolio, uh, then ETFs here might be a more attractive um, 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 solution for you since uh, in low beta, so low beta sectors, um, uh, they definitely um, um, overcome the aspect of the um, diminished advantage you might take as a good stock picker here. And um, this is also true. You should definitely take ETFs into your portfolio if you have no deeper knowledge about the specific company you want to invest in. If you combine those two, as we did in the last slide, you could also have a look at the ETF in this sector you're, you wanna look at and you wanna invest in. Take um, the top 10 holdings, take the top five, do some research yourself based on, let's say, PE ratio, one, one component, for example. You could also have some um, um, idea uh, based on the um, simple technical analysis, for example, um, trading, um, um, with 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 um, moving average, for example, um, there's there there's several opportunities for you to to um, do some 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 research. But how you could combine the knowledge? Um, who are the strongest companies within your sector? This is what you get out of the top ten holdings in the respective ETF, which invests in the sector, and then look at the strongest names within uh, the top holdings here, in fact, and then you could also go for uh, at least putting a small portion with the aim to get an um, um, over average um, um, return on your investment here um, to, 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 uh, yeah, to invest it, in fact, in, in, in this respective one company in one stock and have the other part in another company uh, in another stock or have half invested in the stock and the other in the whole sector in the ETF, for example. So combine the knowledge of, of both. Um, and that's it. Yeah, that's it for today. So uh, if you have any questions now, um, if you if you want to want to discuss trading in general. So we, we now today spoke a lot of about um, investment, uh, investment opportunities, stocks, ETFs. Um, if you are a trader, which I could imagine you are, um, and you are interested in, in not just discussing today's topic, but also um, um, trading setups, day-to-day -day trading setups, intraday trading setups, please join us in our exclusive um, trading spotlight community here um, under tradersyard.com slash group slash 312. There's our trading spotlight community. Here's only um, 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 a snapshot where it's three. Right now we are close to 200 people who are there on a daily basis. So feel free to join us there, ask questions. I am there, Paul is there, Marcus is there. We, more, we are more than happy to ask, um, answer all your questions. By the way, Paul, he has the next webinar on Monday and uh, he will answer the question, how does the US election 2020 have an effect on the US dollar, including what does the US election mean to the US dollar and why is it so important in fact and then what are the scenarios that can play out for us? Probably this is of high interest now after the uh, latest comments um, and developments around uh, Donald Trump, especially in the White House, COVID-19 infection, um, uh, the question around um, a corona relief package, discussions between Dems and Republicans there going on. So probably this is of high interest for you. Um, you're more than free to, to join Paul here on uh, 2 p.m. London time, 12th of October. So Monday, next Monday, check your inbox for the webinar link. If you're right here now um, listening to the live event, if you are on YouTube, please, if you enjoyed the, the content, leave a thumb up here. Um, and also, if you want to be uh, live within the event itself, head over to atmarmarkets.com, there to the education tab, webinars, and there you can register for free for the Trading Spotlight webinar series. And um, atmarmarkets.com, the website where you find more information, these are the contact details. Here's the risk disclaimer, and that's it for my end. So I wish you a happy trading. Watch your stops. If you have any questions, shoot them over. Ask them right away in the Trading Spotlight community or below the YouTube video, um, and that's it for my end. So have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. See you.